when it comes to the free will argument in response to the problem of evil, right? Our personal desires, which may or may not manifest some uh, moral corruption, right? That's going to mm-hmm. be directly related to the way in which we've been engineered to behave. And who engineered us to behave the way that we do? God. Even before Adam and Eve ate from the tree, they were engineered to do something that was morally wrong, even though they weren't aware that it was morally wrong to do. It would appear to be the case that this entity literally set us up for failure. And so what would we be describing about this entity when we say that it's morally uh, good? Give if me not, half a second. I got to okay. my mic. I'll give you a second. All right, you're back. So, like, when, when we say that God is morally good, what are we even describing about him in the first place? So let me, let me backtrack a little bit and ask you this. When Eve ate the apple, right, are you suggesting that God designed her to eat the apple? Or is it possible that God designed her to make the conscious decision herself to eat said apple? Um, at what point did Eve eat the apple? After the snake tempted her, right? Right. Okay. Not before. No, she needed to be influenced by a being of higher intelligence in order to even make that decision. So she wasn't even really evaluating this inside of herself. She was just listening to whatever the last person told her to do. God says, don't eat the apple. She doesn't. The snake says, eat the apple. She does. Also, and this is just sort of a sidebar, but uh, if you read Genesis chapter 2, verse 17... God explicitly tells Adam that on the day he eats that apple or fruit or whatever it is on the day he eats Mm -hmm. from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, he will surely die. They didn't die. And that's what the snake told them that you won't die. When you eat this tree of knowledge of good and evil, you will just be awakened to what is right and wrong. Like God is. And that's what happened. The snake told them the truth, not God, but that's, that's beside the point. I just thought that was interesting to plug in there. Yeah, I remember hearing that before. I forgot what exactly I heard about it, but I do need to go back on that. And I, but, I started. But when, deep when Eve recently, makes that decision to... to eat the apple, right? Right. All she knows she's doing is what the last person told her to do. She eats from the tree and she doesn't die. She doesn't fall down dead. And then she tells Adam, hey, I ate from this tree and it tastes good and I didn't fall down dead. So you should eat from it true. And then that's what he does. And then their eyes are open. Not even, not even when she ate it first did her eyes become open. It was after Adam ate it that both of their eyes were opened. And then they knew what they had done was wrong. They knew that what they had done was immoral at that point. Not before eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. See, morality as a concept was only afforded to these people once they had already committed the immoral deed. That is the most convoluted system I could ever imagine. It would be one thing, but the possibility for, pe- for them to do it was always there, right? Yeah, like yeah, the they had the capacity to, obey God to do or it. Not to obey God. Right, they had the capacity to do it, but they had no ability to morally adjudicate obeying God versus not obeying God. Right? Like, imagine you're in this position, okay, and you're told by one entity not to do X because it'll kill you, and then another entity tells you it won't kill you; it'll just make you really, really smart, and that other entity doesn't want you to be smart. Okay, clearly you're not the kind of person who would want to be tricked, right? Right. So the only way you can figure out who's telling the truth is to test it, is to eat the fruit. That's the only way you can know who's telling you the truth. And that's what she did. She ate the tree. Like any other curious being who wants to test the claims being made to her, she did the only thing she could do, and she ate from the tree. And guess who the liar was? God was the liar, not not the serpent. Oh, okay. I love your logic. Sorry, yeah. Duke. I had to mute you because this is a one-on-one. Uh, he left. <laughs> okay, so <sighs> let me you. So you don't think it's possible for God to create a being that can consciously make the decision to eat the apple? No, I think it is logically possible. That... I mean, Eve did make the conscious decision to eat the apple, but she didn't make an informed decision to eat the apple. She didn't make a moral decision to eat the apple because she didn't have the the ability to morally adjudicate the claims being made to her. She didn't have any concept of deception or trickery. She didn't know right from wrong. We're talking about a grown woman with the moral evaluation, evaluation abilities of a toddler, right? We don't punish children for being tricked by adults, 
okay? When a predator lures a child into a black van with no windows, we don't blame the kid. We don't say, oh, the kid should have known better. No, the adult should have known better. It's the adult who's at fault because they had more situational awareness. They knew what they were doing was wrong. The kid didn't know. The kid had no life experience, right? <clears throat> but with Eve, she's that little toddler in that situation. She doesn't know what's going on. And that's assuming that we're taking the story literally. But in a purely pragmatic sense, everything that you and I do, every choice we make in life is informed by our level of information, our understanding of our environment, our personal desires in the moment, and our awareness of the consequences. Eve had none of that. And not only did God not stop at just punishing her for her transgression, he decided that it would be his moral reservation to punish literally every single human that would be born subsequent to that deed. Instead of, you know, giving us all the option to make the choice for ourselves and be born with a clean slate. No, he had to punish tens of billions of people, generation upon generation upon generation, condemning the overwhelming majority of everyone who has ever lived and ever will live and currently lives to hell to eternal conscious torment and fire, a realm that he specifically created with the infallible foreknowledge that the overwhelming majority of his sentient creations would go there. That is not the act of a morally good being, at least not in any way that you would consider morally good to be a coherent terminology, right? I mean, I suppose you could define it tautologically by just saying that that which is morally good is that which conforms with the edict, character, or nature of God. But if you do that, then you're not really saying anything when you say that God is good. You're just saying that he is himself. And muted. See, this is why I wanted to come in here, because <laughs> I could just mute these people when they joined and tried to derail. Uh, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why even... Oh, <clears throat> this is 50, not 5. I'm dumb. <laughs> okay. All right. So, there are good points. I'll give you that. This is a new, I wouldn't say it's a new area, but it's definitely something new I'm exploring. So, admittedly, I don't quite know how to answer all of the, the points you've made. Uh, I... Well, you're already more honest than most people I engage with. <laughs> How do I put this? <clears throat> My understanding as of now mm. is that, how do I put this? When God created everything, he said it was good. Not perfect, but it was good. Mm. My understanding is that he gave Adam and Eve free will and that they made the conscious choice but they could still choose who to believe whatever right not necessarily that <clears throat> how do i put this can i ask you a question yeah yeah go ahead okay uh do you own any firearms do i personally own any no not yet okay well let's assume you do for the sake of argument <clears throat> and yeah. you have a child we'll say they're four years old Mm -hmm. So they have some situational awareness and a concept of right and wrong, like a very rudimentary concept of right and wrong. Um, <clears throat> if you left a loaded gun out on the table and then just told your child, don't play with that, but then did nothing to impede them when they pick it up and shoot themselves in the face, who's at fault for that? That would be me because I left the gun on the table. Yeah, you were literally there standing there watching them do it. They pick it up, you don't stop them. They point it at themselves, you don't stop them. They put their finger on the trigger, you don't stop them. All right? And this is all within the confines of a limited human being. You. Okay? You can't just right. snap your fingers and make the gun disappear. You can't turn right. the bullets into bubbles. Okay? You can't, like, just influx this person telepathically with the knowledge that this will kill them and they don't want that. But you still have ample power to absolve the situation and prevent the child from imposing unnecessary harm on themselves and you choose instead True. of to interact with this person and stop them from hurting themselves you choose negligence yeah. you you choose an action over action and in any other yeah. circumstance we would consider you at fault for that but for whatever reason when you compound this issue by epic proportions 
and you apply it to literally every human on the world and every tragedy that has ever happened, right? When it comes to God and his infinite creative power, we exonerate him for that somehow. We rationalize, right? This is literally the key characteristics of an abusive relationship. It's our fault that he allows us to suffer and uh, anguish despite the fact that he created the world and he created the causal relationships and the way that things would interact with each other. And he created us with our predispositions and our desires and our susceptibility to temptation and moral incorrectness and corruption. He did that, not us. We have no power in this situation. We might be able to choose between available options, but it's a magician's deck, Malinke. It's a magician's deck. He controls which cards we pick. He controls the cards in the deck. He knows in advance which ones we're going to pick, and he arranges them thus. Let it me is... ask you this real quick. Go ahead. If you were to put yourself in Adam and Eve's shoes, right, and you had no concept of good and evil, would you choose to obey the being who created the universe or a snake on the tree? I don't know. I wouldn't know how to tell the difference. I would think there'd be a difference between a god <clears throat> and an animal. Maybe. Because you were, cause you, cause they were put in charge of the animals, right? Sure. They weren't put in charge Adam of Adam was anyway, according to right. Genesis 2. Yeah. yeah, Adam was put in charge of the animals. Well, let's let's compare that analogy to um, a real life situation, right? Um, right. What we're talking about here is somebody in a, in a position of supreme authority versus somebody who's not in a position of supreme authority. Okay, and when it comes to obedience, I would hope at the very minimum you don't accept that obedience in and of itself is intrinsically moral, right? Like obviously we wouldn't agree that the Nazis were behaving morally for obeying their commanding officers. Yeah. Um, Right. So the issue here is not who I would choose to obey. It's the value, the moral value of that obedience. So when it comes to the ethics that I evaluate in the situation, I am devoid of that. I don't have the capacity to know who I ought and ought not follow. Like I said, in this situation, you have Eve just doing whatever the last person told her to do. That's it. Like, it's not, it's not like, you know, you have the snake in one ear and God in the other, and she's trying to fight between who, who do I listen to? No, God tells her don't eat from the tree. And she doesn't. Well, to be fair, God actually didn't tell Eve not to eat from the tree. He told Adam not to eat from the tree. And there's no actual detail in the story, which indicates that Adam ever relayed that information to her other than Eve seems to be aware of that edict later on in Genesis three. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll put that aside. We'll assume that she knew God said, don't eat from the tree. Well, she doesn't. She's venturing on eating from other, any other tree in the garden, doing whatever Eve does. And then boom, the snake comes along, tricks her into eating from the tree. And boom. There she goes. She eats from the tree. It's just whatever the last person told her to do. This is not a person with like high level, uh, mental adjudication abilities. This is not somebody who has good judgment. This is literally an adult woman who was born yesterday, making a decision that condemned the entire world. I mean, I, at the very minimum, if I was an omnipotent God, I wouldn't put that power into her hands. Oh, you, you would expect you at the bare minimum that they would have the capacity to morally evaluate commands prior to being punished for moral misdeeds. Do you think that, that they could intellectually do that? So that they Again, could use reason you and I okay. can't, you, you and I can only operate within the benefit of hindsight. You and I both have an understanding of moral adjudication. We can't conceive of what it would be like to not have that, to know what it would be like before the tree of knowledge of good and evil had been consumed or the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil had been consumed. You and I don't have the capacity to know what that would look like. We can only speculate, but we have real world examples where people with limited moral cognitive abilities are not judged or punished uh, for doing wrong things if they don't know what they're doing is wrong, right? That's the whole point of the insanity plea. If somebody does something wrong and they're just mentally unhinged and they don't have the capacity to know right from wrong, we don't punish them the way we do normal criminals because we understand that justice is not served there. We have this intuitive understanding that a person who doesn't know what they're doing is wrong is not as culpable as a person who does. Adam and Eve did not know what they were doing was wrong. All they knew is that God didn't want them to do it but they didn't know that it was immoral to do that, which God didn't want them to do. They didn't know that until after they ate from the tree. 
No, they knew before because God told them not to. They knew There's God no told them not to. to. They didn't right. know that doing things God tells them not to do is immoral. Their understanding of morality and immorality came after they ate from the tree. Like, this is the is ought fallacy. They knew it was the case that God said, don't eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. They didn't know they ought not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil until after they ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Like, I mean, you, you got there with the analogy I gave you earlier. I mean, when you're in control of all the circumstances of a particular phenomenon, right, and this little kid shoots himself in the face because of your negligence and your decisive intentional decision to put a loaded gun on a table in front of them and then tell them not to touch it, but don't do anything to stop them if they do, right? You already agreed you're culpable for that, but somehow God's not culpable despite the fact that he arranged literally every condition that we experience with meticulous scrutiny. And he knew with infallible certainty all of the consequences of these decisions.